Hello everyone, I'm Xin Lei He from CISPA. Today, I'm going to share with you this paper, Stealing Links from Graph Neural Network. This is a joint work with Jingyuan Jia, Michael Bacchus, Neo Zhenqiang Gong, and Yang Zhang. So let's get started. Nowadays, machine learning are playing an important role in our daily life. We leverage powerful machine learning tools in many scenarios like automatic driving, smart assistance, object detection, and even in our daily communications. One of the key factors for machine learning to become so successful is the data. With huge amount of data, actually we can build very powerful machine learning tools. Most of the current model are designed for the so-called grid structured data, like image. In this model, different images are independent. However, many data come naturally in the form of graph. For example, social network, molecule structure, and knowledge graph. These data are so powerful, but how can we leverage them? To fully understand the graph data, a new type of network has been created called graph neural network. Graph neural networks show great promise in handling graph data and have been deployed in many real-world applications by big companies like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Since graph data is the most valuable information in GNN, or in another way, graph is the natural factor to differentiate GNN with other machine learning tools. The security and privacy of the graph need to be taken into account. Most of the previous work are focusing on adversarial examples over GNN, where the attacker tried to manually create some examples to fool the GNN and let them predict the wrong label. Here, we take a different angle to understand the security and privacy risk in GNN. We are focusing on the graph data. In our work, we focus on the transductive setting of GNN. Here, transductive means during the training phase, we input all node features as well as the whole graph into the model. The only thing I've known is some certain nodes label. You may notice that the question mark in the graph. So we can also call it semi-supervised learning, which means during the training phase, all the feature can be observed. Only certain node label are missing. And during the testing phase, we just need to predict this node labels. To be more clear, since all node features have been used in the training phase, the model can use a mapping function to link node feature with node ID. So all we need is just node ID. We drew inside a node ID, and we can get the prediction. In our work, our research question is, given two nodes used to train a black box GNN, can we predict whether they're linked or not? Now let's talk about our threat model. Here we consider three types of threat model. We can assume that the attacker know all node features or not. Also, since we are inferring the relationship between the blue nodes and red node, for example, we can also assume the attacker know some other existing links, which we call a partial graph. Again, the attacker can have it or not. For the third setting, we have a shadow data set. That is also a graph dataset with node connection and feature information. The shadow dataset can come from different distribution from the target dataset. As we mentioned before, each of the three information attacker can have it or not, which means each of them is a binary choice. In total, this ends up with eight different attack models. For the weakest setting, we assume that the attacker has none of them. The strongest setting, we assume the attacker has all of them. For each attack model, we can build, for each threat model, we build an attack model. So due to the time constraint today, I don't have time to present all the eight different attack, but I will choose two of them to present. The first one is attack zero. In this attack, we have no information about node feature, partial graph, or shadow dataset. Given two nodes ID, we use the ID to query the target model, which is a GNN, and we can acquire two posteriors. Then we can measure the difference between these two posteriors. Concretely, we can use cosine distance, Euclidean distance, correlation distance, etc. Since we have a value, 
we can do the unsupervised attack. Note that GNN essentially aggregates information for each node from its neighbors. This means if there is a link between two nodes, then their posteriors obtained from the target model should be closer. In another word, closer the distance, more likely two nodes to be friend, or we call positive node pairs. So here, figure one shows the performance of attack zero. The X axis represents the data set and the Y axis represents the AUC score. Here we test eight different distance metric and we find that the correlation performs best across all data set. For instance, on the size here data set, the AUC score for correlation distance is 0.95. However, unsupervised attack could not provide a concrete prediction. So to tackle this, we can use k-means to give a concrete prediction. Again, for the size here data set, we can achieve an F1 score of 0.87. Now let's talk about attack one. In attack one, we have a shadow data set, which means we can train a shadow model, which is also a GNN. Then for the node pair from shadow data set, we can acquire their posterior. Here we want to learn from the posterior whether the two nodes from the shadow data set are linked or not. Then we want to transfer what we learn into the target data set. So since we already got a label from shadow data set, we can conduct a supervised attack. Now let's go deeper about attack one. The left part is the shadow model and the right part is the target model. Actually, we can see the dimension of the posterior in a shadow data set and target data set might be different. So to find a bridge to transfer knowledge from the shadow part to the target part, we can use distance metrics followed by attack zero. And we think about how to represent the posteriors in one value. Actually here we can use the entropy. So we don't want the order of the input to affect the result. Like for two nodes, we have two entropy value, but we want to eliminate the effect of order. So actually, follow a previous word, we use for operation to eliminate this order issues. Concretely, the attack procedure is as follow. We can train a shadow GNN model, and then for each node pair, we can input them into a shadow model and get a posterior. Then we can generate a feature vector and put that into an attack model, which is an MLP. And the output is whether the two nodes are linked or not. Then we change into the testing phase. Here we also extract two nodes from the target data sets. We query the target model and get a corresponding posterior. And we also generate this feature as we did in the training phase. Then we put a feature to attack model and predict whether the two nodes from the target data set are linked or not. So here we show the performance in attack one. Each column represents a shadow data set, and each row belongs to a target data set. We calculate the mapping between them. The best results are highlighted in bold. So first of all, the AUC score from the best performing shadow data set have a consistent improvement on all data sets compared to attack zero. The result indicates that the adversary can indeed transfer the knowledge from the shadow data set to enhance her attack. An interesting finding is that for a chemical data set, like the first five, the best shadow data set is normally a chemical data set as well. So similar result can be observed for citation data sets. This shows that it is more effective to transfer knowledge across data set from the similar domain. To better understand this, we extract the attack models plus hidden layer output for positive node pairs and negative node pair and project them into a two-dimensional space using TISNIC. Figure 3a shows the figure 3a is the case when the shadow data set come from similar domain, and figure 3b is the cases when shadow data set come from different domain. The blue color is the negative node pair and the red color is the positive node pair. So here we can see that if the shadow data set come from similar domain, for both negative pairs and positive pair, 
they actually lie in very similar regions. However, if these two data sets come from different domains, both negative pair and positive pair actually lie in very different regions. So this gives us a hint that we can conduct more effective transfer attack if we have a shadow data set that come from similar domain. Now let's see some overall evaluation results. So we have several observations here. So first of all, we find that in general, more knowledge lead to better attack performance. And among the three factors, we find that partial graph contains the strongest signal, while shadow data set is the weakest one. And also we find that our attack have better performance than the traditional link prediction. This means that GNN indeed leak graph information. So here is the conclusion of our work. First of all, we are the first to propose the link stealing attack against GNN. And our attack can effectively steal the link from GNN. And in general, we find that more information will lead to better attack performance. Finally, we find that transferring attack can also achieve good performance. And our code is available at this link. Mm, thank you very much. This is all of my presentation and I'm ready to take your question.